in the Arctic, tensions between Russia and Norway, the US and NATO are rising. The deployment of radars and bombers near Russia's border, like the Globus 2 and 3 radars, which are potentially used in the US Missile Defense Shield, and the B-1 Lancer supersonic strategic bomber. Also, the construction of new US military bases in Norway are adding to these tensions. The tension between uh, Norway, Russia and US is rising in the Arctic uh, region uh, at the moment, quite uh, dramatically, I would say. It has been going on for uh, the couple of uh, three or four or five years, and, and it's rising uh, as to sp when, when we are speaking. Uh, it is related to many things. It's related to the east-west uh, uh, situation, but it's also related to what is happening in the Arctic area because the, the more of the ocean is ice free because of the climate change and uh, there is a lot of uh, interest from both sides to use these areas as to, to for, for economic measures. The Globus 3 radar is currently being constructed in Norway under US command near a small Norwegian fishing village of Vardo, less than 40 miles from Russia's Kola Peninsula. This radar will replace the 1988 U.S. radar Globus 1 and will work jointly with Globus 2. The cost of Globus 3 has been estimated at 1.2 billion U.S. dollars. It is expected to become operational this year sometime. According to Russian Foreign Ministry spokesperson Maria Zakharova, the radar transmits the information it receives to the United States. A senior fellow at the Norwegian Defense Research Institute, Michael Mayer, claimed Vardo to be an ideal location for tracking missiles in northern Europe, especially missiles launched over the Arctic. The new Globus radar could potentially be used as part of the U.S. defense shield. Russia claimed that uh, Globus 3 is a missile defense radar. And that is important because uh, Russia is uh, uh, deeply concerned that they will uh, not have any possibility to use their nuclear nuclear weapons in a war, nuclear war, if the U.S. missile defense uh, system is effective. Uh, missile defense is one thing, but there are two other aspects to which is also very important. Uh, remember, Globus Three is. Uh, uh, very close to the most important military bases uh, Russia have uh, at the Kula Peninsula. Um, Globus 3 is uh, uh, detecting uh, every kind of movements, uh, getting intelligence from all of these bases. That's one thing. And, and the third thing is also that uh, um, this uh, system, uh, US system in the world, uh, is the most accurate system U.S. Uh, at the moment have for tracking satellites uh, in space. And uh, as you know, uh, the, the possibility for uh, war in space uh, is rising at the moment uh, also. Uh, all the big nations are building the capacity to uh, make uh, to do warfare in space. And if you're going to do warfare in space, you have to, to understand the accurate position of, of all the satellites. And, and from the U, from U.S. side, uh, the Varda system is the most accurate at the moment. Today, Norwegian Armed Forces say, quote, the Globus system has never been part of the U.S. nor any other country's missile defense system. It is not connected to nor does it transfer information in real time to the U.S. or any other country's missile defense system, a prerequisite for a functional missile defense system. The modernization effort will not change this. Well, the history of these radars and this site proves otherwise. The Globus project can be traced back to the 1950s when NATO-aligned Norway proved to be a strategic front for the Cold War between the US and the Soviet Union. According to the Norwegian military at that time, the Globus system was used to quote, conduct surveillance on, track, and categorize space objects, conduct surveillance in our national area of interest, and collect data for national research and development. 
Globus 2 was built by leading U.S. war contractor Raytheon. It was initially located at California's Vandenberg Air Force Base, where the Pentagon regularly tested its intercontinental ballistic missiles. A Raytheon document from 1999, which is the same year that Globus 2 came to Norway, says the system was, quote, originally designed to collect intelligence data against ballistic missiles with aerodynamic and satellite tracking as secondary missions. The following year in 2000, the Bulletin of Atomic Scientists published an expose on the site in Vardo and its relations to missile defense. While the Globus 2's public mission was focused on space, NASA denied any knowledge of this project. Three months later, the Wall Street Journal reported that a storm tore off the radar's Teflon exterior, only to reveal that the Globus 2 was indeed pointed towards Russia. This would be equivalent to Russia deploying a radar in Tijuana, Mexico, claiming that it was for the purpose of space exploration, but having the radar pointed directly at Vandenberg Air Force Base in California, then denying everything after being accused of covert surveillance on the US with evidence to back up that claim. Now, on top of this mysterious radar site, the US has recently been approved to construct four new air and naval bases in Norway. The US and Norway have signed an updated military cooperation agreement that permits the US military to construct new facilities at three Norwegian airfields and one naval base. The locations marked for US military deployments are the Evnes Military Air Station, Rygi Military Air Station, Sola Military Air Station, and Ramsun Naval Station. In the words of Norwegian Foreign Minister, the new agreement, which provides the Pentagon unimpeded access to the bases, confirms Norway's key position on the northern flank of NATO. In addition, U.S. bombers have landed in Norway as recently as March 2021. The U.S. B-1 Lancer supersonic strategic bomber, one of four recently deployed to the Orland Air Base in Norway, landed for the first time ever inside the Arctic Circle at the Bodo Air Station in Norway. The B-1 is one of the three major U.S. long-range strategic bombers and the one equipped to carry the largest payload of any American bomber. It's capable of carrying 24 nuclear bombs or 84 conventional ones and overall can be equipped with the biggest payload of both guided and unguided weapons in the Air Force arsenal. It has the speed of up to Mach 2.2 and can fly almost 5,000 miles without refueling. We see now that uh, there are more activity from the American side in this region. Uh, uh, we have uh, uh, aircraft, U.S. aircraft uh, carrier that uh, visited this area quite recently, and there has not been no U.S. aircraft carrier in this year, uh, this area since the Cold War. That's a more, one clear, one, one clear uh, signal of the new, new situation. Uh, we have we see that the U.S. Uh, Marines are going closer to the. Uh, um, uh, they are going closer to uh, the, the Russian bases at the Kola Peninsula than uh, they have in, in many years. Uh, um, and also we see, of course, that uh, Russia are doing bigger exercises than they have not done uh, for many, many years. What I think we should worry about is uh, the possibility of uh, warfare in space. Um, we see now that China, Russia and US are putting up quite a lot of effort to modernize uh, and to be uh, effective in uh, space warfare. Um, this is very little on the agenda in the traditional media. But we know uh, that China put up uh, and demonstrated uh, that they could shoot down uh, one of their satellites in 2007. 
and from then on they have uh, moved on with uh, with uh, new projects for being more effective in space warfare uh, we see uh, that uh, uh, russia in the last two years two three years uh, also had done tests that uh, shows they are able to do a space warfare and uh, uh, US is uh, follow up. So uh, I'm very concerned about uh, the, the development in uh, the years ahead in uh, this regard. The construction of the Globus 3 radar along with the existing Globus 2 radar the bomber landings and the construction of new military bases are some of the major reasons for the sharpening of tensions between Russia and the US NATO Norway alignment. Got to go.